Hi everybody, Ryan here, back again with another Kit Critical video. This is going to be part two of our pistol series. So the part two of this series is going to focus more so on setting up a loadout for your pistol and what you need for your pistol so you can get it gaming. So let's get started. So once you get your pistol, the propellant, BBs, your iPro and all that stuff, what do you need to do to play with these? And the answer is, really, other than knowing the field rules, not too much. The first thing you want to consider is whether your pistol is going to be a primary weapon, so if this is going to be the only gun that you're going to be using at the field, or a secondary weapon. It's going to be, you know, in a holster, uh, along with a rifle, shotgun, or whatever you decide to use. Now, for some loadouts, such as for snipers and machine gunners, you might need a pistol as your secondary weapon if you do engage people indoors or certain areas at whatever field you're playing. For example, at a field like Siege, machine guns are allowed to use full auto at a 3-5 to five round burst. However, inside buildings or at close ranges, you will need to switch to a secondary or put your machi machine gun to semi-automatic if it's capable of doing so. So having a pistol as a secondary is pretty essential for that. If you're a speedy boy, speed QB player, or you just want to have some fun practicing with your pistol in the field, you might want to use this as your primary weapon. And in that case, your loadout will have slightly different considerations as well. However, there are some overlapping features and we're going to go over that right now. The first thing is how you're going to carry your mags. So your mags are super important because they're going to be what, you know, you guys have your gun with, you guys have your mags, it's got BBs, that's what you're going to need to shoot, obviously. So for mag carriage, there's basically two ways to do that in Airsoft. The first way, and the most recommended way I would say for pistols, is going to be using a belt. And the second way is going to be using a chest rig or a plate carrier of some sort. Now I don't personally put my pistol mags on my chest rig or plate carrier because for me, a pistol is a secondary weapon. Uh, however, a lot of people do, and we have some examples of that that we're going to pull up in picture right now. So as you can see, a lot of speed QB players, as well as people who decide to use their pistol as a primary, will tend to carry a lot of pistol mags on their chest rig. And it's pretty obvious that this is a really effective and really great way to have a lot of mags and a lot of ammo in a pretty secure location. One thing that I will recommend for chest rigs if you do decide to carry pistol mags with them is try to go for something that's small because pistol mags aren't really wide, they don't take up much space. So something like a micro rig is a great choice for that. Now the way that I traditionally carry my pistol mags because for me a pistol is more of a secondary weapon is going to be on the belt. And I like loading from the belt because it's really natural, it's quite a lot faster, it's the choice of a lot of competition shooters and a lot of real life spooky dudes. So pistol mags on the belt are going to be my choice. Over here, I'm using a Persec Sierra V1 belt. If you don't know what that is, go check out our Persec Gear Chairsoft chat video. There's a lot of cool information on his belt. And by this time, one of you lucky winners out there would have won our giveaway belt. So here's some advice for you. On the belt, I have on basically going from the clock system. This is my 12, this is my three, my nine. This is, I don't know, 11 o'clock or so. So on my 11 o'clock, I have two pistol mag pouches here. And these pouches are made by STAC and they have a Kydex insert in them. They're kind of on the pricey side and you can find clones of these or different kind of open top mag pouches, but I do like them quite a lot and I've been using them for a few years now with absolutely zero complaints. And the reason I like these is because they're super fast to draw from. Generally, your pistol only carries 20 rounds per mag uh, or somewhere around there. And you will need to reload pretty quick if you're using it as a primary weapon or if you really need to bring it out and you run out and you get, have to gas your gun up. Having open top mag pouches really eases the facilitation of reloads because there's no flap that you have to worry about, no velcro and stuff you have to worry about. You can actually, with these ones, uh, re-index the mag back in super easily. The advantages with open top pouches is going to be security. So if you have something covering that mag, you're obviously going to have a lot less chance of it dropping out, especially because these pistol mags, as talked about in the last video, are kind of expensive. Now, open top mag pouches, if you get a good one, like this one with the tight Kydex insert in, in it, or if you get like a, the pistol version of the G-code, is a really great option. For these, you can adjust the tension on them. And for these, the Kydex is already pretty tight. I've never lost a pistol mag with these personally. They never fall on the floor. If you're using a pistol as a primary weapon, you probably won't need to put it anywhere because it's always going to be in your hand or in some sort of pouch. However, for those of you using pistols as secondary weapons, you might want to consider looking at a nice holster. Now, if you don't have a holster, you don't have one in your budget, and you also have M4 mag pouches, you can actually fit a pistol, like a small pistol, like this Glock 19 here, in M4 pouches pretty well, and it's actually a really great trick to save on some cash. And as long as they have good retention, this actually is a very legitimate solution. A little bit ghetto, but it works really well. Now, for those looking on a proper setup, I do recommend a holster of some sort. So there's a lot of ways to mount a holster. One of the ways is going to be on your chest or in a cross draw rig. And those are really good if you're in a Milsim vehicle crew or something like that. So you don't have anything on your hip that you have to draw from. Uh, it's just a lot more convenient and a lot more comfortable. 
However, having your pistol on your chest rig and stuff like that, I find not to be as stable. Also, when you're shouldering your rifle and you're doing transitions or anything in front of you, it is kind of this big mass in front of you and it does take up a lot of space and it also can impede in reloads. What I recommend if you're using a pistol as a secondary is going to be some sort of hip holster. And there's tons of choices out there. However, most of them fall into two categories. And those categories are gonna be passive retention and active retention. Passive retention holsters are gonna be things like Kydex, leather, stuff like that, that you put the pistol in and it holds from the tension to the material holding the pistol in. So for example, this is an Airsoft Collective, link below to his products, uh, Kydex holster. This, pis this holster fits the pistol via pinching the pistol at the trigger guard. It's a really great holster to use. It's super fast to get the draw out because you don't have to worry about any buttons or anything like that. And it's very secure. So if you're getting a passive retention holster, make sure that you get one that has that click. It has the pistol really nice in it. And the way you can kind of test that is just doing a little shake test. And if it doesn't come out when you shake it, generally you're pretty good. The other type of holster you're gonna to wanna to look at is something with a bit more retention, and that's going to be an active retention holster. Active retention holsters will have some sort of button or release that clamps onto a certain part of the pistol that holds it. So it can't fall out when you're shaking it, and it can't come out unless you depress the method of activation. So for this one, this is a Safari Land holster. It uses an ALS system, which locks onto the ejection port of whatever pistol you decide to get it for. And it locks in like that. And this will not come out whatsoever. I can pull it as hard as I can, the only way it can come out is if I activate this button here, pull the button down, and I take the pistol out and it comes out super easy. Another example of an active retention holster is going to be this Warrior Assault Systems Universal Holster. And this is my old one, you might have seen this in a few vids. And this works by clamping onto the trigger guard over here. So you put this pistol in, and this pistol will not come out at all, unless I press the button here, depress that, and take the pistol out like that. So active retention holsters are really great if you find yourself in really adverse environments. You find yourself crawling on the ground a lot, you have you know trouble with your pistol coming in and out of your pouches and stuff like that, and you want that little bit of security. Um, for duty use and stuff like that, they're obviously really good so nobody grabs your pistol, but for airsoft that doesn't really matter. Uh, but active retention holsters are a great option. Now one holster option that I really would avoid is going to be a fabric holster, so one of those old school drop legs and stuff like that. And the reason I don't like those personally is because they're not really easy to draw out from. You have to kind of defeat this button that is like a snap. And most importantly, they're not easy to re-index into. So if you're going to be using your pistol as a secondary, you're going to also want not just the pistol to be easy to be taken out, but also for it to go back into where it goes. For an active retention like this, it's super easy. In, button, out. For a passive retention like a Kydex, even easier. There's no buttons or stuff to fuss with. With something like a fabric holster, it's not too great because you have to put it in, you have to snap it, you have to make sure all the loops and stuff like that are on it. Not awesome. Also, those are the holsters that we have personally seen most people drop their pistols on the floor with, especially on the hard concrete floor of Siege, not great. Or outdoors, you might lose your pistol in the grass. Also, even worse. I would also personally avoid super big drop legs. I know some people love them. Uh, personally, I'm not a fan of them because I find that when they're on your leg, they kind of start spinning around like a fidget spinner and they don't really sit in the same place all the time. When they're on your chest or they're on a nice rigid belt, belt like this Persec belt here, they kind of sit in one place so you have that consistency of draw and all that stuff. You don't have to worry about where your leg positioning is, where whether it's kicked up, kicked back, or the pistol spinning around on you. Now if you have a drop leg platform and it works well and doesn't do that, great, keep using it, I'm not telling you not to. However, just for new players, it might look cool in video, it might look cool in like these old Call of Duty loadouts or something like that. Uh, but however, I noticed a lot of disadvantages with them by watching a lot of players and by personally having an old one myself. So I would avoid big drop legs and fabric holsters. Those tend to also be a combo, so just avoid those and I think you'll be good to go. After selecting your proper pouches and stuff like that and making sure that you can carry your ammo, you might want to also look at a dump pouch. Now for me, I don't really use my dump pouch that often. I like to put my pistol mags and stuff back in here as an admin reload. However, for certain pouches like closed top mag pouches, that's not super easy or it could also be slow. So something like a dump pouch really facilitates for faster disposal of your mags. These are gas mags. If you drop them on the floor, they might leak or develop damage, crack feed lips, stuff like that. Obviously you don't want that. So getting a good dump pouch is good so you can drop your mag in there and reload your pistol nice and efficiently. For me, this is a little tactical tailor roll-up pouch. Dump pouches are generally pretty cheap and they're always good to have so you can just put stuff in them. So it's a great investment. Might as well get one. Doesn't hurt to have one. Now for the pistol itself, 
what kind of attachments do you want on this? And you can trick out something like a high kappa or a Glock or one of those standard pistols to your heart's content. You can build it to not even look like a Glock or a kappa anymore. So this is gonna be probably a separate video down the line for super Gucci guns. However, the basics, right? So just like a rifle, and I'm a bad example of this because I don't have one on my gun, I think the first attachment that you should get for your pistol, other than getting more mags of course, is going to be a flashlight. And the reason that is, is this allows you to ID people, kind of aim also with that light, to see in dark areas of course, and to control enemy behavior by tricking people out, more on that later. So there are a lot of different varieties of flashlights that you can get. So the two I would recommend, and they're various airsoft style ones, are going to be the Streamlight TLR and the Surefire X300. Now there's a lot of other brands out there, like you've got the Olight IEDs and you know all that other stuff. However, I recommend these two because the airsoft style ones tend to be pretty good at an affordable price, and the real ones, while expensive, are even better. The other reason I would recommend these lights over the other ones is because they're very standard. The method of activation is super easy. They have like a little switch back here so you can activate it with your support hand. Uh, same thing with this one. I don't think this one has any batteries, but same thing. Uh, and you can activate it with uh, the trigger finger if you just want to look at something. The other reason I would recommend them is because the bezels are really standard so you can put a protector over them, no problems, and that's super important for airsoft. Do not trust your airsoft glass to uh, warranty or whatever. You know, might not be covered as well. You know, you don't want this breaking on the field. The biggest reason I would recommend the TLR or the X300 is going to be accessory compatibility. And what that means is compatibility with holsters. Most holsters, whether they are going to be the Airsoft Collective passive retention holsters or something active retention, like this Blackhawk Omnivore for the TLR, are going to be made for either the TLR or the X300 because they're the most common pistol light. They're the bread and the butter. If you get a fancy schmancy pistol light, uh, I see a lot of people getting like APLs and stuff like that, or you know, Olights, you're gonna really be limited on your holster options, and in my opinion, you're also, you're also gonna get a worse light. So generally stick with those two and you'll be fine. A holster option for those light, for example, is gonna be like a Blackhawk Omnivore, Surefire makes some, uh, Airsoft Collective. Generally, you're just gonna have a lot more options and options are good. As you can see, this holster over here clamps onto the light body and you can take it out. Secret note actually is that the Blackhawk Omnivore for the TLR also fits the X300. So if you have to buy one version, even better, right? Now other pistol attachments you might want to consider are going to be something like an RMR or a little red dot up here. I don't have any examples on the table right now. Uh, I do believe a flashlight is more important than that because you can kind of use this to trace your BB's name if you really want to, although I think that's a bad habit. Uh, but again, just much more versatile. You can see in the dark with it, you can do all that stuff with it. Something that is really popular with especially pistol primary users and even rifle guys here at Siege and in most fields is going to be a tracer unit. Now, if you do get a tracer unit, there's some good examples out there. There's the little x Tech ones and all that stuff. I personally don't use tracers because I think they give me away and uh, it's just not my thing. I also don't want to spend more on tracer BBs. I'm just being cheap. But if you do get a tracer unit, pistols, because the barrel is often moving and because the slides are reciprocating, you don't want a heavy one. You want one that's small and light. If you get a heavy one, chances are you might break that tracer or it might not sit properly. You also need to make sure that your barrel is correctly threaded for that tracer. Chances are, the pistol that you buy isn't going to come with a barrel threaded for a tracer unit, and it's obviously not going to come with the tracer itself. So if you do want to run tracer BBs, and they're pretty cool because they glow, you do want to consider a barrel that is compatible with the tracer, and of course the tracer unit itself in your budget. So if you're using a pistol as a secondary weapon, we're going to recap what I think you need after you get your pistol and mags, of course, from the previous video. So first off, good pouches. Good open top mag pouches that retain your pistol mags well, that are compatible with your mags, that facilitate fast reloading and re-indexing of your mags. Then I would consider also getting a dump pouch. So something that you, know, you can put your mags into in case you need to, and something that you can also use to hold other stuff. Of course, I would recommend a good holster. So if you can't afford a good holster, an M4 mag pouch or some of that works well in a pinch. However, I generally do recommend investing in one, whether it's passive or active retention. Once you get your pouches, dump pouch, holster, of course your mags and your pistols and gas and BBs and all that stuff, I think you have a pretty complete pistol loadout and you're good to get out there and have an awesome time on the field.